So I'm back today, guys, to show you the characteristics of a topographic map. This map's a pretty good one because it pretty much covers everything that you need to know in terms of the characteristics of how to read properly the contour lines on a topographic map. So the first thing you always want to make sure that you can recognize is going to be the contour interval. Each line on the map is going to go up by 10 meters. So you'll notice that some of the contour lines are darker. They represent what are called index lines, and they will always have an elevation attached to them. From here, you can figure out if you're going uphill or downhill. But I'm going to actually start over here near the ocean because that, that's an easy point to start. Because when you're starting near the ocean, it's always starting at zero elevation, whatever your units are. Then from there, going up by tens, I know I'm going to be going uphill, 10, 20, 30, 40, because there's my 50 line right there. So really looking at your contour map, you should be able to identify what each line is going to go up and down by. And there are some other features here. We have a depression here. We have a hill here and also on the northern part as well. And we also have kind of a hilly style island over here in the ocean. So let me show you just a little bit about hills in general. And I'm going to start over here on the island because there's definitely a, a few features that are important. So again, starting at the contour line right next to the ocean is zero, then 10, and then 20. So land masses are never just flat top. You're never just going to stop at 20. So a lot of times what you'll get questions about is what is the highest possible elevation of the island? Well, knowing that our interval is going by tens, the next line would be 30. We do not have a 30 line though. What is the highest you can count to before you hit 30? And the answer there is 29. The highest possible point of that island is 29 meters. You'll notice over here on the eastern side of the island, the lines are close together. That just means it's really steep. When your contour lines are close together, you have what's called a steep gradient. You'll notice that the contour lines on the west are far apart. That means you have a very gentle gradient or relatively flat. So looking at the landform here, you can notice that sometimes your lines are really close together. It just means it's relatively steep. When the lines are a little bit further apart, they're relatively flat. Let me do one more example of the highest possible point. So if I have a 50 line right here, whenever you have your contour lines making circles around each other, that's going to indicate you have a hill going upwards. So if that's 50, this is 60, this is 70, the highest possible point of that hill, well, the next line would be 80, but we don't have an 80 line. The highest I can count before I hit 80 is 79 meters. I can do the exact same thing, except going down into the earth with the depression. So you'll notice that this feature here, this is kind of a, a hole in the ground. It's a crater in the ground. And you'll notice that the contour lines have little teeth coming off of them. They're called hatcher lines. That's an indicator to the observer that this feature is not a hill. Instead of going up, you're going down into the earth. So you'll notice that the hill just to the west of the depression, there are no hatcher lines, but this feature does. That's how we know the hill, you're going up in elevation with the depression going down in elevation. So again, knowing that we're changing by 10 meters, this point A would be 10 meters. And if I was going to ask you for the lowest possible point, you're just going to count, kind of count backwards. So my next line would be zero. I don't have a zero line there. So if I'm going to go to the lowest possible point, just count backwards. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. One is the deepest I can go before I would need another contour line. So the highest possible elevation is always one less than the next contour line. The deepest possible point is one greater than the next contour line. So just kind of keep that in mind in terms of those little rules. Good, so we got the depression, we got the hill structures, we got the highest possible points, we got the lowest possible points. Rivers. You have the Amethyst River right here, kind of in the middle part of your map. 
Notice how your contour line makes a V. Notice how there's a bend in the contour line. Well, the bend in the contour line is a clue on how this river is going to be flowing. The easiest way that you can determine if a river is flowing in a certain direction is that rivers always flow downhill. So if I kind of backtrack the Amethyst River, right here is about where the source is going to be of the river. So the one thing about that is that the source of the river is about 55 meters. So it's going to go from 55 meters down to zero meters, which is right into the ocean. So I know that the river is going to be flowing downhill. And actually, right here, right at the source, it's actually flowing quite fast because the lines are really steep. The lines are steep, the slope is steep, the lines are close together. That's a good indicator of some fast-moving water there. Another way that you can tell how the river's flowing is that the river is going to be flowing west because I know that the contour lines are making a V. Notice how they make a V? The river flows out of the V. So this river is flowing in that direction. It's flowing in a westerly direction. Look at Copper Creek. Right here at Copper Creek, your contour lines make Vs. And also they're really close together here. So again, between M and N, your river's flowing really fast because your lines are really close together. And then it really kind of flattens out here because your lines are really far apart and really slows down. But again, your river is flowing kind of in a west-northwest direction because the river is flowing out of the Vs. So those are just your basic characteristics that you would find on a topographic map. Now there's a couple other things that we can determine. And the first thing I want to kind of discuss with you is how to determine gradient. We can figure out mathematically how steep a slope is going to be. Gradient equals your change in field value. Now on a topographic map, change in field value is going to be change in elevation. Your field value is going to be elevation, that's what we're measuring, divided by the linear distance between the two points. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to do the gradient between points B and C. B is on your contour line of 10 meters. C is on the contour line of 50 meters. You just subtract them. 50 meters minus 10 meters divided by the linear distance between them. That's where the map scale is going to come in. You just basically just take a piece of paper, put it right in between the two points of B and C. What I'm going to do is I'm going to mark off where B is, mark off where C is on my paper. Bring it down to your scale. Try to line up your two points starting at zero. And it looks like my distance here is about two kilometers. So the linear distance between them is two kilometers. So the numerator is the vertical distance between the points. The distance is going to be the linear distance between them. So this is the vertical elevation divided by the linear distance between them. So that's 40 meters divided by 2 kilometers. Now, simple division, that's going to end up being 20.0. Don't forget about your tenths place value. Meters per kilometer. That numerator unit goes first, that denominator unit goes second. And that's what your, that's what your gradient's going to be. So every kilometer you travel between B and C, the elevation's going to change by 20 meters. The other feature that we can do off the map is something called a profile. A profile is just a side view of what the landscape is going to look like. So the first thing that you want to do is that my profile is going to be drawn between D and E. What I like to do is I like to actually physically put my elevations along my line that connects point D and point E. And I'll show you why that is in a moment. So I'm going at D. I'm going down to Copper Creek. I know I'm going down because I've already labeled the 40 line and the 30 line and the 20 line. You're going to go down to the river or down to the creek and then back up to point E. So 50 is labeled, 40, 30, 20. I'm not labeling the river because that's not a contour line. Now I'm going to come back up the other side. And just to make sure what these values are, I'm just going to come over here. That's 0, 10, 20, 30, 40, 
50s labeled. So just to make sure that this line right here, if I kind of follow that, that's my 20 line. 30, 40, and then 50. So what I like to do is I actually like to physically label my lines. And the reason why I like to label my lines is I'm going to put my piece of paper right along my baseline of D and E. And now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take my elevations and transfer them to my paper. Exact spacing. So there's D and D is at 50. Here's 40. So I mark off the, where my control line touches my paper with that elevation. 30, 20, and then this line here is 20, pretty tight here, 30, 40, 50, and that's point E. The reason why I put my elevations above, this way I don't have to take this and kind of flip it, okay, back and forth to try to look for my elevations. I just transfer the elevations directly to my paper, the spacing of the lines exact. I then come down to my grid. I put my marks right along the bottom of my grid, and I bring those points directly straight up. Now, D is already given to me at 50. That's already produced for me. 40 mark, bring it straight up to the 40 line. 30 mark, bring it up to the 30 line. 20 mark, up to the 20 line. 20 to 20. 30 to 30, 40 to 40, and then 50 is already done for me. Now connect your points with a smooth curve. Anytime you come to a river, and this river is right along that 20 mark, so I have back-to-back -back points here of 20 meter elevation, you want to bring that river a little bit below. Remember, the maximum I could go down, I could go down to 11 here if I wanted to, but you want to dip that down a little bit. You're never going to have a landform that's straight across. Dip that down a little bit. Continue connecting the points. Make sure the line goes through your values and connect it to E. There is my profile along line D and E. So the idea behind this is that we just did a profile. We did gradient. We did your steep slope, gentle slope. We did your hills, depressions. Highest possible point, lowest possible point, river direction. So I hope this is going to help you out with your studies. Hopefully this will kind of uh, answer any questions that you guys have in terms of topographic maps. Thanks for joining me, and we'll talk to you soon.